All right, so headless CMS and SEO is one of my most frustrating, favorite, annoying, and rewarding topics because there is just so much to cover when it comes to pleasing the Google gods. Um, and I'm just on my third cup of coffee trying to figure out how to best structure this because there's a lot that happens behind the scenes with a headless CMS. There's a lot that happens within the editor that we as, as content creators would handle. And then there's a lot that happens after, right? So let's uh, maybe, let's approach it this way. What I will cover is a very, very quick sort of two, three minute technical overview to provide some context into how heavy CMSs should be set up from a development standpoint. Um, then I'll go through a, a few parts of the of the CMS, kind of going back into how asset SEO is handled in Dato, um, how we as editors can sort of apply some best practices when creating content, how fallbacks work, um, and so on. And what I will not cover is kind of the best practices when it comes to things like sitemaps and fallback uh, rendering on your side um, and all the other on-page and off-page stuff where, frankly, there's people way smarter than me with tons of free resources out there who do a much better job of explaining it. So um, if you remember, we kind of briefly touched upon the concept of content modeling in the context of the Dato Academy, right? Um, there is another article on headless CMS and SEO. Uh, that I would highly recommend you check out, which talks about the technical foundations when, when kicking off a project. Things like uh, architectural decisions, content modeling, uh, your approach to CDNs and how deployments and caching and things like this would work that kind of uh, set up the baseline on your project and give you the peace of mind that moving forward, all the content you're creating is already more or less going to be rendered the right way. Uh, say for the few tweaks you would have to make as an editor. So I'd recommend checking this out. And the next thing to cover is kind of having a bit of an understanding with your engineering team or your dev team, right? Once you've gotten a bit of context on the technical implementation of your product, it's good to point them out to this or to explain to them or to collaborate with them on kind of how SEO fields work in Dato because uh, not all headless CMSs would offer you a SEO field um, not not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just we have an opinionated way of handling SEO uh, for which we provide our own sort of SEO packages on how your content can be queried for the meta tags, for open graph tags, with social preview cards and so on. Um, so working with, uh, sorry, working with the sort of SEO fields and making sure that everything is being queried the right way is a good understanding to have with your developers so you're not uh, left in the blind or confused when you're creating content and you're not sure how things would be eventually rendered on the front end. Um, within Dato, you also have the option of fallbacks, right? So since we have our own SEO package, we have the flexibility to offer or to render fallbacks if you as an editor have not, say, attached a new OG image to a blog post or updated title and description fields to a new landing page. Rest be assured that you're not going to be querying for blank content. Dato will provide a fallback, uh, which is something I will show you within the CMS as well. And lastly is the is the, is going back to the topic of of uh, plugins, right? So there's tons of community plugins or plugins you can build yourself for things like readability analysis, um, some more advanced SEO previews, um, some sitemap updates, and so on. Whatever your use case might be, I'd encourage you to speak with your developers about seeing how you can have plugins that would improve your overall SEO and content experience within Dato, and. So let's get back into the CMS now, right? Uh, those are all topics you should speak with your developers about. I am not qualified or smart enough to get into the technical details, but what I can cover is aspects of the CMS itself. Now, we briefly spoke about the concept of asset CDN settings way back when we were introducing this, this course. And this is also something that Alessio will be covering a bit more in the media area. But what's good to know from an SEO standpoint is uh, we work with some really great providers when it comes to asset handling, right? We work with ImageX for images. We work with Mux for videos. And what they have is an honestly incredible CDN across the world and optimization settings, which makes sure that whenever we upload anything into the CMS, A, they are optimized 
compressed, enhanced, what have you, based on whatever parameters we want and we think would be best for our project. And those are then also appropriately cached and handled and served and rendered and so on. So a lot of the image side of SEO is taken care of under the hood, where we as editors don't need to do any manual workflows of cropping and things like this. So I'd highly recommend having a chat with your devs to understand what's the best approach in, in your project and making sure that you're serving assets the right way. Cool. So now let's get back to the things that I and we can actually control. Oh, that's the plugin I was talking about for the readability analysis. Anyways, check it out. Uh, going back to what we can control. So a lot of what we've done in our blog posts and landing pages is utilize the slug and the social fields, which you've already seen how these work. We kind of calculate slugs based on the title. Uh, we generate previews based on the title field and um, the image field and provide some social sort of previews for networks like oh, platforms like Facebook and Telegram and WhatsApp. So if we go back to the blog post that we had created together, where we talked about what everyone got up to this weekend, a quick look into the socials preview again shows us that we've kind of inherited all of this content from the blog post. And on the front end, the meta tags generated would also be specific to platforms. We'd have the page uh, metadata for the title description, the OG image and so on. We'd also have specific values for things like the Twitter card, we'd have things for the Facebook card. And depending on how and where you want to render these and what previews are available, Dato will provide these as HTML tags. But one thing to notice here is we're still missing this favicon, right? It's kind of ugly. We've got this whole uh, very lorem ipsum -y sort of setup. We're not able to really personalize what this looks like. And should we not have had any of these fields calculated, we just have very blank things here like the site title or a missing description. So how do we fix this? How do we actually have a site-wide um, identity to the project? Some of you may have noticed this little SEO preferences tab lurking in the corner, which we haven't touched. So I think it's time to first get into this to sort of set the foundation of SEO from a project standpoint. Within the SEO preferences is where you would have your project properties, right? So if you're coming from a more visual CMS like a WordPress, this is where you'd have it in tools and settings. Uh, if you're coming from another legacy CMS like or another website builder, you'd be very familiar with the layout. So first things first would be the website favicon. This is something all of us have in many front end frameworks. This is created in the repo itself and not handled by the CMS. But since Dato offers an SEO field and we have certain um, capabilities to to offer metadata, we can we can handle and manage this within the within the CMS itself. So let me quickly go ahead and choose a favicon which is this little cute cloud logo that we generated and we can start creating all of the fallback content so localizations for seo are mandatory depending on which locales you have activated for your project you will have to provide fallbacks for each one of these so i have gone ahead and filled italian and german just with some dummy data so Again, you don't have to watch me working in silence. So let me go ahead and copy all the fallback titles and the title suffix here, along with a description. So every time we create a new page, if we have blank content or if we are not inheriting content by default, those posts and pages will be published with this fallback um, with these fallback SEO values, so you're not querying blanks. You could also prevent your website from being indexed, so this would by default have a no index tag when whenever you're querying your website, which um, not sure if it's going to be commonly used. Uh, this is a site-wide setting, so I'd recommend not working from here, but having a no index toggle for specific pages or posts. Similarly, you'd work on uh, the social card, right? So let's go back to copying something and pasting over the website name, which is required. Uh, you could also have your Facebook address and Twitter account or X account uh, shared as part of the response. And you could decide whether by default, when you share links on Twitter, you want just the summary or the summary with large image, and that's rendered accordingly. Um, and finally, let's go ahead and choose the social fallback image, which is this very creative uh, usage of our logo and go ahead and save this. So what I've done now is create uh, project-wide SEO preferences, which means if I were to go back to this blog post now, 
and just give it a quick refresh, uh, we notice one very small difference on the preview is we now have a favicon. We also have the title suffix. Now this could normally be things like your company name or anything you want to have following it. You may also choose to have nothing. Uh, but this is a site-wide setting based on how these results would now look on a SERP. It's also a bit hard to see the difference because we already have a title and an image and a description associated with this blog post. So maybe let's go ahead and create a new record. So on a very blank project, you can see that we're already sending some data in to the SERPs now. Even if we wanted to go ahead and share a link with no metadata attached to it of its own, we would generate the OG tags and the images and everything that's required. So here's where you kind of understand that you have the peace of mind when creating content. You don't always need to update SEO on the fly, which is what I do many times. Like I kind of go back and make bulk changes, which is not best practices. Um, but that's kind of a very quick preview into how SEO settings work. Of course, on-page SEO is very important, so following best practices when creating content is something I highly recommend. And a very quick last look into the image aspect again. Alessio will be going into details with this in the media area, but to give you a bit of an insight since we're on the topic, Dato also offers you all the sort of image SEO options you might need aside from optimizations and compression. So let's maybe quickly open up this um, image that we had uploaded. By default, all the assets will offer you the option to add a title and caption, as well as the alt text to make sure that you're querying for these fields. And depending on your project, you will also have the option to localize all of these to provide a different value for different locales or languages. You can also add custom data if you wanted to query something very specific for accessibility reasons or for a different platform. And depending on which sort of workflows you use and platforms you use to upload images, all of the metadata from the EXIF will also be imported into Dato, giving you the manual option to override or enhance them as required. So what we've kind of gone through in this, uh, in this video is taken a very quick look into the technical implementations from a conceptual standpoint, not to make us experts on, on the technical side of things, but just to give us kind of a bit of um, context on what we should speak with our developers about. We've also gone through the fact that you have global settings for images to make sure that they're being served in the correct format and optimized as you would require, as well as going a bit into the CMS again to look at what the, what the SEO preferences for the project are and how they impact the content you're creating before finally taking a look at the options available on each image or video or any other media file type that you might um, look for.